Hey there, voters. I'm Captain Stacey Hanrahan, and welcome to Friday's episode of The Voters TV. First up, our captain's caption photo was provided by Janie Laney. We'll reveal the caption of the day at the end of the show. Next up in Let's Make a Deal, avoiding boat lust in our blue water sailing segment. The fall boat show season is fast approaching, and with it comes what blue water sailing Suzanne Giesman calls boat lust. Yes, it's very easy to fall head over heels for the newest and sexiest vessels at the show. So Suzanne is helping us out with her boat buying survival guide. The first step to avoid being overcome with boat lust, have a wish list. Write down all the equipment and amenities your ideal boat would have. Don't forget to include price, minimum and maximum draft, length and displacement. You have to train yourself to look beyond pretty upholstery. Remember that unless you have unlimited funds, there probably won't be a vessel out there that matches your list exactly. There will most likely be some compromises. So why not put the items on your list in two categories, must-haves and nice-to-haves. Once you've got your list set, head to the boat show and bring your poker face. Buying a boat is like buying a car. You don't want the broker seeing your excitement. Suzanne's next tip, kick the tires and check under the hood. Of course, this rule applies more to used boats. Since marine surveyors are expensive, do your own mini pre-survey before hiring one. Check the hull for signs of blisters, inspect the rigging for problems, and look for water stains on the bulkheads. Finally, don't rush the sea trial. Suzanne says testing how a boat sails is one of the most critical steps in the buying process. So, for example, don't choose a windless day to sea trial a sailboat. Wait for a good stiff breeze to test any potential purchase. To read Suzanne's complete guide on avoiding boat lust, go to www.bwsailing.com. And now it's time for our boat test reports feature of the week, where we'll take a look at the 38 Hardtop Express by Saberline. Today I'm on the Saberline 38 Hardtop Express. Today's cruising style demands comfort, style, and class. Saber's design team delivers this and more with the new Saber 38 Express Hardtop. Starting up front, a wide walkway leads to the bow of the boat from the stern of the deck. One inch stainless steel railings make up the safety rails going forward. The wood tow rail has custom stainless fairlies for handling lines. On the bow, you have an anchor pulpit with anchor and windlass. A large locker handles lines and fenders. The expansive bow area leaves plenty of room for sunning. Here at the helm, the cockpit has a large wet bar on the starboard with a prep area, sink, and ice maker refrigerator. The helm and navigator's chairs are stid seats. The helm station has rocker switches and breakers to the right of the hydraulic steering tilt wheel. Above the wheel are cages for each engine and the spotlight joystick. Our test boat has the optional electronic throttles for drive-by-wire. Also, we had air conditioning on both the helm and navigator station. The nav station has a tray for chart tools and a chart kit. Skylights have screens and covers. The steps leading into the cabin have wood anti-skid strips, and under the top step are the battery switches, under the next is the trash bin, and under the next is storage, and under the bottom step is a nested tool center. The room below has a galley to port, central head forward of the galley, and a spacious settee to starboard. Light switches have built-in dimmers. The settee is L-shaped and a beautiful polished wood table with two posts. The table can be lowered, turning this into another guest bed. At the bow end of the settee is a wine locker above, flat screen TV, and a bottle locker below. The galley has a double cooktop, covered deep sink, coffee maker, microwave, and below is a refrigerator freezer with more cabinets and drawers. The head has a vanity with stainless sink, toilet, and a circular shower enclosure. The stateroom has a cedar line closet to starboard, cabinets surrounding the bed, and drawer and cabinet combo to port. Doors below the bed wrap up the amenities in the master stateroom. The entertainment deck on this model has the optional teak gunnel tops. A bench on the deck has storage below. Fuel shutoffs are behind the door just below the armrest. Through a hatch in the deck, you have access to the fuel tank and fender storage. A transom shower with hot and cold water is at the transom door. Through the transom door, you have a large swim platform and a telescoping swim ladder. It's easy to reach the oil dipstick, fuel water saps, and the sea strainers on the 38. Batteries are below the generator. 
This new 38 is 38 feet 6 inches length overall with a beam width of 13 feet 8 inches. She displaces 21,500 pounds dry and carries 350 gallons of fuel. The 38 was on plane in just 11.9 seconds and at 30 miles an hour in 12.3 seconds. Top speed was 37.9 miles an hour, burning 47.9 gallons per hour. I found her comfortable cruise speed to be at 2,000 RPMs and 18.4 miles an hour, burning 15.9 gallons per hour for a range of 365 miles. Thanks to Boat Test for that report. To see more of the Saberline 38 Hardtop Express, you can cruise on over to Boat Test's website at www.boattest.com. Now let's see what's splashing around in nautical news. Rapidly melting ice in the Arctic Ocean is exposing new shipping lanes. Waterways in Alaska's extreme north, once traveled only by indigenous hunters, are now navigable by oil tankers, fishing vessels, and cruise ships. In fact, so much traffic is expected by the Coast Guard that it opened two temporary stations on Alaska's Arctic coast. Scientists say the polar sea ice is half the size it was in the 1960s thanks to global warming. Some believe the Arctic Ocean will be completely melted during the summer months within 20 years. This rapid melting means that Canada's northwest passage from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean could become a regularly traveled shipping lane. What will power the ships through the passage? Well, the region itself may contain as much as 25% of the world's undiscovered oil and gas. While no one knows for sure how much or how quickly the ice will melt, the Coast Guard says it's prepared for the potential traffic. And finally today, the captain's caption of the day is... Why is she sitting there on the phone when she's supposed to be watching out for rocks? Submitted by Molly Ringberg. <laughs> and that'll do it for this episode of the Boaters TV. See you back here on Monday.